Tin Paper is the national anthem today in this week's edition of Roundtable. A great panel we have lined up for you to review the new releases. Uh, you can join us, of course, as well if you want. Uh, tweet us with your thoughts on the records we'll be discussing in the studio. Just use uh, the hashtag Roundtable at BBC Lamac Show. Uh, or join us online, bbc.co.uk slash six music. And we'll uh, start off with Kate Bush after these headlines. Let's kick off round table when with this, uh, which is new from Kate Bush from the forthcoming album, 50 Words for Snow. This is called Wild Man. I don't know about you, dear listeners, but I have no idea, really, what to make of this. Let us know what you think, though. Uh, BBC.co.uk slash Six Music. Uh, it's uh, where you'll find the listeners' roundtable, but you can get involved uh, via text 64046 or on uh, Twitter as well. We are BBC at BBC Lamac Show on Twitter. Uh, and welcome to the studio. Well, this week, what a bunch of guests we've got. Uh, three guests who lead, uh, need little or no introduction. He's one of radio's most committed new music champions and co-curator of next week's Soon Festival in Cardiff. He's Hugh Stevens over there. She's one half of Slow Club, but would also secretly like a role in EastEnders uh, and has a birthday this weekend that's rebecca taylor and uh, making his round table de uh, round table debut uh, as the band released their new remix album from radiohead ed o'brien welcome to the program last time we saw each other we were on another of these things fighting talk on yeah. five live a bit a bit of sport wasn't it a bit of sport and yeah. no one who goes on uh, fighting talk as i think colin murray the presenter said on the day no one goes on on their first appearance and goes on to win <laughs> You went on to win. Well, I, I said to you, I think it was either a setup, but it also <laughs> revealed my competitive instincts. Yeah, 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 slightly. Yeah. I, thought, I thought you were very good. I'm back on it tomorrow, uh, Saturday, this this coming Saturday. So if you can give us some, give us a hand with some of the answers later very, very down the pub. <laughs> okay, uh, Kate Bush. Have you been a fan of Kate Bush down the years? Well, you, you're probably just not quite old enough for Wuthering Heights and the first wave. Of no, Kate Bush, I totally you? remember that. Do I was, you? I was ten years old. Were so you? was it like 78, 79? 78, yeah, I yeah. I was it. ten years old. I remember it was it was the number one record, wasn't it? Mm. Uh, it was like April, about April seventy eight. Remember it really well. I mean, Kate Bush for me, uh, she's obviously an amazing artist. There's no doubt about it. She's proper. She's real. But and I know people who totally. I mean, Nigel Godrich, our producer, absolutely adores Kate Bush. But. For what, for whatever reason, for me, I never really totally connected when that album came out, the big album in the mid '80s. Mm. I, I think I was, it was just the whole uh, aesthetic of it was kind of I was just into I was into the Smiths and yeah. all things indie, you know, at that stage. So it was a bit, it was well, a bridge well, too far. While she was going through her Radiohead experimental phase, that was a step <laughs> right. too far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> so no, but this, did you, um, did you like this? I what what I like about her is that she 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 does her thing and she's obviously still got it. She's obviously my problem with the song is that I think she probably needs a producer. I don't like. I, I understand. I think I understand the the moves she's trying to do sonically and and they're interesting. I like the chords and stuff that's going on in the chorus, the move in the chorus. But I just I. I it would be great to hear, say, with someone like Jamie XX or somebody who mm. can really probably focus her a little bit. I don't know. Mm. You know, I think if you're left to your own devices and you are in a bubble, that you can tend to sort of, I don't know, it, it, it sounds just a bit safe. Mm. Good song, but possibly production's a little, you know. For you, uh, Rebecca, would you, would you uh, or have you worked uh, just with Charles, just on your own stuff? Would you, you know, would you go it alone? Have you done stuff on your own? Or do you always use a, produ a producer? Yeah, oh, and producer. Slow Club. Yeah. yeah, the last album we worked with Luke Smith from right. Claw, uh, and that was amazing. Yeah. And that really worked for us. But our first album we did ourselves, and I don't know, it's, it's so difficult i think for us we're really not techy so having yeah. a producer meant we could go play him something go we want to sound like this and he could twiddle knobs and then we sounded like that right. and uh i think that's the beauty of it but do they do um uh, more than that and say don't play so much you know that's a bit luke did, did he? <laughs> and he made me because sit down behind a drum kit and try really hard whereas i'm the laziest person ever and before i do one take and be like right yep done because we were in charge and he yeah. made me sit in there all day and i wanted to kill him but yeah. i think that for us, that was the best thing about having a producer. We really pulled out what we could do rather so, than... So, are the best producers like school teachers? 
Well, they I, make you get there on time. They keep you in detention if you're not doing well enough. Yeah, he he did a lot of like reverse psychology with me as well because I'm so mardy and stuff. He'd be like, <laughs> if you, he got me into like yeah. thinking like, different things about myself, and then I clock him and go, no wait, you're not going to make me go there. In my you're not getting inside my head. No, and he always did. And but we, you know, I'm really happy with the album. Thanks. Thank uh, um, what about this Kate Bush track? Do you like this? Uh, I love. Like I'm a massive fan. Like I think right. any girl that makes music probably is. Um, and. I, she's clear, like she's bonkers, but it always sounds cool. I think, and like Hounds of Love is one of my all-time favourite albums. I agree with the producer thing on this. It sounded weird in in parts to me, but uh, I, always the uh, chords and things, and then the her voice. And mm. she's the only person I think that can probably get away with spoken word vocals mm. these days. As much as I'd love to, but my accent uh, doesn't bode well for that. But. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I like. I want to listen to it more. I want to listen to the album, and yeah. I can't really say anything bad against her. Uh, the album, by the way, uh, is out on November the twenty-first. Fifty words for snow. Hugh Stevens has been nodding along to a lot of those comments. Do you like it, or are you slightly bemused by this wild man track? Can you from Kate Bush? Yeah, I think bemused is the word, Steve. Um, I, I don't know. I've never been a massive Kate Bush fan. She's kind of like um, the prototype for Florence in the Machine in that she's always been. You know, the image has been really strong, and it's always been out there, isn't it? I mean, my introduction to her was. Alan Partridge, you know, doing his Kate Bush versions, which is awful and going to rile all the Kate Bush fans listening. But what a brilliant place to be. I mean, she's done one tour ever. How brilliant is <laughs> that? She's never that. had to sleep on friend's sofas, oh no God. tour of bus. No McDonald's for her. No, so she could do exactly what she wants. I mean, that song um, I, it washed over me a little bit, I have to say. Okay. Uh, Richie says, uh, and these are some of the comments uh, keep them coming. Richie says, How does she do it? The standard is always so high from Kate Bush and Tom Tom says I'm absolutely loving Wild Man, Kate's strongest single for ages and again she's done something completely different, this is brilliant and it's uh, 8 out of 10 from the listeners uh, in the studio, Ed starts off out of 10 for Kate Bush uh, 6 uh, 6 and Rebecca 8 from me 8 from you, Q 5 from me 5, we'll add your marks up as we move on to this uh, which is a new single, the second single from a band called BC Hearts and uh, this one side of actually the forthcoming single this is called Cola One side of the forthcoming single, Slush Puppy on the other side, that's called Cola. It's out on October the 24th. It's the second single from Beatty Heart from South London. Uh, that's called Cola then. And uh, Rebecca, your turn to start. When's your birthday? This weekend? Saturday. Saturday. And uh, it's the big? Big 2-5. Big 2-5. Can I just say? Sunday, big 4-7. Wow, that's there cool. Blokes are cool when they're older. Are they? Yeah, my time's ticking away. They're tired, huh? <laughs> I tell you, that. they're tired of that. Uh, uh, but we are both Libran, so well yeah. well balanced and charming. Mm, not well balanced, me at all. No, <laughs> the opposite. Charming. Oh yeah, come on. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you think of Beatty Heart? Um, I like the name because I like putting Y's on the end of things to make them sound cute, like Drinky, <laughs> Beatty Heart. Right, right. That's nice. Uh, I really like the drum sounds. Do you do that with nicknames as well? Uh, and a Y to a nine. Yeah, I just, on tour, honestly, all, I just kept saying sleepy. <laughs> Even that's a word. Uh, just put a Y on the end of it. Put a Y on the get, end of it, it becomes cuter. Way. All right, we'll uh, try that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, the drums were really cool. I kind of wanted it to be a bit more instant. Like, But I am a big verse, bridge, chorus girl. So yeah. I feel like if they took all that, how cool it sounds and had something a bit more instant with the vocal, I would have liked it. But okay. no, it's, it's cool. Like... That's that's my that's my opinion. <laughs> opinion y. Uh, very opinion y it was. Uh, Hugh, um, now you've probably had this band in session already or just about to, aren't you? Yeah, well we interviewed them yesterday. It was their first ever radio interview and I didn't know this when we were doing it and you know us like interviewing people for the first time ever, you know, sometimes microphones you're talking into the microphone like this and then <laughs> and it warms up. So it was lovely meeting them for the first time. The session goes out on my show next Wednesday night on Radio One at midnight and yeah, you know, likey is what I say about <laughs> BT Heart. Um, I think I, I li I, I'm as much of a sucker for a catchy chorus as, yeah. as the next person, but I quite like the fact that it's not immediate. I like the sound. I like they've got, um, they really take their art and everything seriously, and, you know, they've got a really kind of cryptic, unnavigatable website, which is just flashes in your eyes and I like all of that um, I like the sound of it I like the uh, the other track Slush Puppy is really good on the EP as well and I, I, I really like the percussion uh, what yeah. is that was that banging drumsticks yeah I think so yeah just yeah. a lot of takes
mix of it. Banging drumsticks sounding like pan pipes as well at some point. I was really hoping, Ed O'Brien, that you were going to like this. This is one of the reasons we put this in this programme, and now you're giving me that face that says, uh, no likey. Well, you know what? I, I don't want to, because it's a young band as well, and no one has the answers unless you're the Lars and the Stone Roses on the first record and possibly Oasis. Mm. Um, but I, I'm like with you, I wanted to hear a chorus. Um, I like the ambition of it. Mm. I really like what they're trying to do uh, and what they're aiming at. And maybe you need to see the visuals that accompany it. But I also have a beef with, I'm going to get a bit anal here about the sound. It sounds to me like it's come out of loads of plugins going on in here. Right. But I, I, I often have a rant in the studio about my problem with a lot of current records are these plugins, these reverbs and delays, they sound so synthetic. Yeah. You know, you, 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 think of, um, you think of Arc Studios and, you know, Lee Scratch Perry and stuff like that. They had these boxes that they used that gave it character. You take it out and put it in something. My problem is that a lot of this music sounds like it stayed in on, 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 on ones and zeros. And there's nothing wrong with digital. And there's yeah. nothing wrong with no. Pro Tools. It works. It does a business. But these plugins, they all sound the same. And I... That, that, um, the aesthetic is slightly what bothers me on this. Do you, do you think this has created uh, an atmosphere where people uh, are using these effects to cover up maybe lacks of, a lack yeah. of ideas yeah, that totally. fill these sort of play, that fill the music? Yeah, I mean, on that track, for instance, I mean, you know, I'm being a bit old fashioned here, but I'd like to, you know, it's, 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 it's psychedelic. That's, it's kind of psychedelic. But with psychedelia, you want to hear little riffs, little motifs that come in. And to me, it just sounds, it sounds two dimensional. Mm. And I don't think it's their fault. I mean, we, you you know, it's partly the problem with where making music is at the moment. It, to, my, to me, it sounds a bit like what, what the industry went through in the 80s. Everything kind of like that gated reverb, snare sound, the yeah. drum sound. We're going through one of those periods and, I, you know, I, I, maybe it covers up lack of... I think they're, they're, they're very ambitious and I like what they do, but they, it's just mm. hasn't got enough hooks in there or a song or even the, <laughs> or even the, the sound of it. I I so one of the things... Don't give up, though. <laughs> one of the things I do like about it is, as well as the ambition, is just... It's just the... I quite like the fact that it's quite spacious though, yeah. in places. But that spaciousness... I mean, I'm, I'm probably being a real snob, and that's because, you know, I've been doing this for a while, but that spaciousness, I, I want to hear the sonics of, like, that kind of spaciousness you get on a Dukes of Stratosphere record, you know, or, or, or Scott Walker. There's those chambers, you know, do you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot mm. of reverb going on at the moment. There's a kind of Ronette's vocal thing, imitation, but that was a real sound that was captured, and a lot of it is this, these plugins that, you, you know, because we use them in the studio as well, and you put them in, you go... It's all right, but it's not great. I, mm. I'm probably just being what they what call an ear queer. Because it sounds a, uh, it sounds a bit soulless. Does yeah, it, it just, way, it just sounds synthetic to me. Yeah. Maybe it's my, it doesn't sound three dimensional. It doesn't like. It's not like a soulful thing. It's not like. It just sounds like synthesis. Mm. Maybe I'm an old fart. No, it's it's just so easy. Basically. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. easy. And it's yeah. all that's presented to a lot of yeah. young bands. I think it's a preset you as can't well. Find yeah. Reverb chambers very easily. Well, no, yeah. but you can get little boxes, little delay units yeah, yeah, you can yeah. get, and you can put it out there and do all that stuff. Twiddle knobs. Twiddle like knobs. It. <laughs> it's only their second single. Right. Yeah, I agree totally. I totally agree. And we were crap on our second scene. <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, comments from uh, listeners. And it's a disappointing four from the listeners. Although Kieran, in, uh, Kieran says, uh, what you can hear in that Beatty Heart track is what made Kate Bush outstanding 20 years ago. Uh, that's in response to one or two people saying, is this being played at the right speed? Or is it even going in the right direction? Uh, <laughs> said Tolhurst, four from the listeners in the studio. Rebecca started us off out of ten. Uh, Five. Five. Uh, Hugh. Uh, the other songs are all of that as well. Seven. Seven. And uh, what do we say, Ed? Four. Uh, four from Ed. I'll tell you what we're going to do, because we've been talking so much. I may just skip past the next track and go straight to this, which uh, is a single which uh, we first played here on uh, Six Music on this programme. It's now on the Six Music playlist, and you can download it if you like the sound of this from their website. This is by We Are Augustines, and this is Book of James. Yes, that is Bruce Springsteen's drums, isn't it? So it's my We Are Augustine's, it's called Book of James, uh, and this is an interesting story, just so, um, prompted by what we were saying about producers earlier on. 
Uh, the story goes that the album which uh, they recorded in their previous bands had been done and they wrote this one last song which they were going to attach to the album uh, and went out to uh, record this uh, three days in a studio with a guy called Dave Newfield who uh, produced the uh, Broken Social Scene album and uh, got there and he said we should do this, uh, changed all the drums, uh, basically re-navigated this whole way around the song and each day they would come down and go that sounds terrible and eventually left the studio after three days thinking this is this has been a waste of our time and a waste of our money and this hasn't worked in any way shape or form uh two four three days later they received the finished track which sounded like that and said now it all makes sense and uh, dave newfield had spent uh, something like 48 hours i think or, or longer just making it into something mm -hmm. amazing uh, what do you think though uh, we are augustine's book of james uh q your turn to start I really enjoyed that. I've heard it a few times now, and um, it's, it's, it sounds authentic. It sounds like it's got depth, and there's so many kind of American bands cropping up all the time. But that, for me, is when like when I first did Cold War Kids, and there's that hunger there. You can tell that there's something interesting going on. I really like the production on that track as well. Um, it's one of those songs that I just want to hear more. I want to hear that again. And what you just said about the production and how um, the guy from Broken Social Scene put it all together. Um, it's, yeah, it sounds yeah. great, because there's so many different parts to that song. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Because it does sound like uh, about two-thirds of the way through it goes into a different song, doesn't it? It's, it takes it goes off in a slightly different yeah. tangent. What do you think, Ed? Yeah, I liked it. I like I liked it. It's authentic. It's got passion. It's got power. Uh, <laughs> it sounds like a marathon advert. Sorry, <laughs> it's got peanuts <laughs> nugget. <laughs> Sorry, I just checked myself. Uh, <laughs> I really like it. I think the the sound is good. Uh, my thing would be, to me, two things would make a big difference. Great lead guitarist, guitarist mm. on top, adding a few, just a few extra riffs, and uh, they're a two-piece, aren't they? Yeah, they've added a drummer recently, yeah. I think, but they were, essentially it's the two of them who yeah. made the record, I think. Uh, yeah, and maybe a, a, like a bass player who plays bass, who's, uh, and, but I think it's really good, and they'll find that, and it's a start, and it makes me want to see him live, and that's... Mm -hmm. And to connect with them, so yeah, thumbs up. It's it's, it's interesting. Where where can you take this sounds now? I mean, yeah, because see, they come from Brooklyn. I mean, they're the least un-Brooklyn-like band apart from the National. There's no one in Brooklyn who sounds like them, probably. But where do you go with this sound? Which says Stu in Chester says uh, it's Arcade Fire meets the Boss, and uh, Von Pip says, "Good heavens, this chap's vocals make, uh, makes Nick Cave sound like Jimmy Somerville." Uh, what do you think, Rebecca? Yeah, quite liked it. I liked yeah. his vocal a lot, and uh, I'm a big fan of the. <laughs> the what, the big drum. drum. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, it was nice. Um, I would be interested to see them live too. Uh, I quite like it, says Matt from Sheffield. That sounds, sounds damn with faint praise, isn't it? I quite like it. <laughs> uh, but as many have said, it's nothing new, really. It's a shame, really, as they could probably write a decent song, but it's maybe just not this. Uh, there is an album, though, to follow, and uh, if you do like it, uh, they have the task of supporting or opening for Glas Vegas uh, with dates uh, later this month. Starts October the 24th, I think, at Coco in London. We are Augustines, and that's Book of James, to say, with the album. Right. Ye sunken ships uh, to follow after that. So, right, stay with us if you can. Still to come, our featured album from Bjork. Uh, also, music on the way from Jeff the Brotherhood and Jack White as Roundtable continues after this news. <laughs> Everyone's laughing in the studio, apart from Ed at this point in time. Uh, welcome back to Roundtable, where our guests are Hugh Stevens, uh, new music champion from Radio 1, and uh, also one of the men behind the Soon Festival. We'll talk about that a little in the next half an hour of the programme. Rebecca Taylor from Slow Club is here, and Ed O'Brien from Radio Head. And it's your turn to start. This Jack White track comes from a 12-track album, uh, which features artists recording previously unrecorded Hank Williams lyrics. There's a box, of, I think a case of lyrics, uh, which were uh, uncovered, and uh, now being turned into songs and uh, the title, The Lost Notebooks of Hank Williams, Jack White's You Know That I Know. Did you like it? Well, it's very authentic, isn't mm, it? Yeah. Um, did no, I like no it? No plugins there. <laughs> no <laughs> plugins, no. And you know he's had a great time in the studio. He's tracked that live. He's down in Nashville. He's doing it. It sounds to me like it was a lot of fun to do. Um, it sounds to me like, um, you know, you'd have to be a Hank Williams aficionado to really get on, the, get off on this, or be a real Jack White fan and go like, oh, he's doing, he's doing, the, he's doing a, like a country and western kind of track. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's all right. It doesn't I don't really connect to it in a big way. So no. um, he's he's obviously again like Kate Bush. 
you know, like Björk later, these are proper artists. So mm. he's on a journey and this is something he's done and felt compelled to do and fair enough. Have you got a solo album in you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if you did have a solo album in you, yeah. uh, which musical path would you take, though? It would be music that you could play at two o'clock in the morning. OK. That's not giving too much away, is it? He's hard, he's playing hard to get. Yeah. Uh, Rebecca, did you like uh, Jack White? Yeah, it's, it sounds really nice. And it's... I always say this, it must be so fun to go, yeah. right, we're going to make this album, it's going to be this genre, and we're going to use it all, and it's going to be classic, th you know, we're going to do all the techniques and stuff, because in our band, we're constantly trying to not sound like anything, and it's really stressful, <laughs> so it must be amazing to go, oh, get the slide guitar out, mm. and um, and you can make it sound so good, and it's a really interesting idea, and it's probably something very special and unusual, I suppose, but I, I, yeah, like you said, it's got to be a Hank Williams fan or a, or a Jack White fan, I suppose. I wouldn't, you know, go out and buy it particularly, but it's an interesting idea. And uh, if you made a solo album, what would it sound like? <laughs> Come on, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, well, I'd like to do, you know, I'd like to make like a really dirty, filthy R&B album, but, but using real instruments and no plugins. There you go. Honestly, I'm going to get him to produce it. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I want to make a dirty R&B album as well. Hey, nice to meet you. <laughs> what a coincidence. Hugh Stevens, if you were to make an album... No, it's fine. Uh, no, really, it... I want to know the answer to that. <laughs> Hugh Stevens, if you made a solo album, what would it sound like? Oh, God. Um, I can't play anything or sing, so it would be awful. Welsh like, language. It sounds like rubbish. I used to be in Welsh... Yeah, we used to rap. I used to rap, slow rap in Welsh. Like a hip-hop Eden Moffat. It was awful. Do we want a guest on my album? <laughs> yeah, I'll do a cameo. We yeah. could do some sort of book slam. You can read something, a bit of spoken word. Yeah, on the uh, Dirty Filthy R&B yeah. album. I'd like to hear this. I'd like to hear this. <laughs> what do you mean, like to hear it? You've got to make it. So yeah. First. <laughs> I'm going to see Rihanna. Talking of Filthy R&B, I'm going to see Rihanna tonight at the O2 so Arena. That's blown all your new music credentials <laughs> in well, just a split not. second. Rihanna, it's going to be great. Is it? Uh, well, what's, what are you looking forward to, particularly, then? What's going to be the highlight of the set? Uh, I want to hear her do an umbrella. Because I've heard Manic Street Preachers do umbrella in right. the O2 Arena, so it would be nice to hear <clears throat> actual Rihanna doing it. OK. Yeah. All right. What do you think of Jack White in the meantime? Well, you can not like that, can you? I mean, of a morning, I like to uh, switch between Fern Cotton on Radio 1, Trevor Nelson on 1 Extra, and, of course, Lauren Laverne on 6 Music. But this morning, listening to Ken Bruce on BBC Radio 2, Hank Williams' son was on. Right. And it was... Uh, was it Siobhan from 6 Music News was doing the right. news? Right. And he was on it, and he sound... He had the most incredible accent and he sounded so thrilled that this album was seeing the light of day because they found all these old songs yeah, didn't they and yeah. bob dylan and everyone's recorded them and so the story's brilliant and and that's the jack white i like to hear to be honest the uh, not the dead weather not the insane clown posse collaborations mm. that he's been doing but the simple jack white could mm. do in country and doing what he did and why we all fell in love with white stripes you know you know partly what this is have you uh, have you noticed how uh, when people go through their leather trouser phase, <laughs> soup dragons, brilliant, to <laughs> leather trousers, rubbish. <laughs> Even for, you could make a case for some of the primal scream records that didn't quite work were, when they were wearing leather trousers. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Prove me wrong, listeners, and I'm sure you will. Uh, Jack White, you know that I know. Marks out of ten. Ed, five. Five, uh, Rebecca. Seven. Uh, seven, and Hugh. Yeah, seven. Did we do? We didn't do marks for We Are Augustines either, did we? So we'll go the other way. So Hugh for We Are Augustines. I know it's a million, uh, million hours ago already. <laughs> Eight, and we want to hear more. Okay, and Rebecca. Seven again, I would say. Seven and Ed. Seven. Uh, one more track before we get to our featured album, and it's this from Jeff the Brotherhood. This is called Stay Up Late. <laughs> Have anyone at home who's air guitaring? Just that little squiggly bit at the end, that little metal riff. Uh, Jeff the Brotherhood, and that's called Stay Up Late, which is from their new album. It's on stolen recordings, this record, once again. Uh, I haven't got all the way through the new record. I'm not sure it's as good as the last one. Haven't made up my mind yet, but Jeff the Brotherhood, Stay Up Late. Uh, this will be your turn to start, I think, Rebecca. Um. Uh, um. I music like this, right? All everyone I know who I love and stuff. I, I probably know people who know these guys, right? And it's something I want. I can totally appreciate, and I'd love to see live, and I'd enjoy it. And I'd probably try and chat the drummer up or something. But like, it's not what I would listen to. Um, right. But this is my problem all the time. Like, I can appreciate so much, but 
I don't actually, when I'm alone, listen uh, to it. All right, one thing you are listening to at the moment. <laughs> no, because we fall out every just, time you just, ask me this. Just one actually, thing. Actually, no, at the moment, I'm obsessed with Psychologist. Have you no, heard no, his I, no, EP? This, this is new. Moshi released it on one of their labels, not even. But he, his second EP is like ravey, um, sort of UK garagey, but he's got this, he's the most incredible like, R&B vocalist right. ever right. and he yeah it, it's really cool okay uh, so that's actually something you might uh, I'm writing it down like <laughs> we're all <laughs> writing once. it down actually <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah no I mean that sounds great I, I don't know how they recorded it it didn't sound like it was a live take or whatever but that would probably be better I think the right. drums maybe need to be a bit wilder and stuff like that but I bet live I bet they're amazing and yeah I can appreciate it but not put it on in my ears okay cute i like the rawness of it uh, i like the sound of it i've heard bits and bobs before this is this album on stolen recordings it is, is. This the one yeah yeah and um yeah i i liked it it was uh, i'd love to see it live which i haven't done yet uh, i love the name jeff the brotherhood and there's a few of these kind of duos out and about at the moment um dz death rays from australia i think are really exciting and civil civic also from australia are very good as well and um of course well you started off as slow club in it uh, as a yeah. duo and then they're all influenced by us i think all influenced by <laughs> you um you know I, I i really liked it i mean i liked the riffs on it and uh it sounded Gee, quite intense what did that middle riff sound like because brett butler has come up with what the middle riff in that tune sounds like it sounds like the BBC snooker theme. Oh, yeah. Apparently. <laughs> uh, Ed, did you like that? Jeff the Brotherhood. Uh, I like the name. I like... What do I like about that? I think the, the thing about a song like this, it's a very tried and tested route. Mm. And I think to really, really make an impact for, for, again, a sound like this, you have to have a great, great song. Mm. To, and, and to me, the song didn't quite deliver. Mm. Um... I don't know. I just, again, I, I'm not really feeling it. I love loud guitar music. You know, they cite Smashing Pumpkins as an influence, and obviously Weezer, uh, and you can hear that. But for me, those two bands had something more melodic. Here's the thing, though, with a band like this, and I, yeah. I'm sure this is in common with a lot of bands, yeah. but given that we are going almost track by track in the new technology, um, you don't really get what this band is about. And this band is about playing seven songs in their garage yeah. to their mates, yeah. and then playing eight songs to people at a gig, and that's what it is. Yeah. Taking one song, which it sounds like it's been recorded live-ish, yeah. doesn't give you a representation, does it? And that's no. the, We are not set up for a band like that. Yeah, it's a bit like I remember going to see the Ramones in like 84 or whatever and it was yeah. the same thing as like you know I, I kind of like the records but they all sounded a bit the same to me and then going to see them it was like it's the sheer visceral energy it's a power and it's kind of like that's part one two three four straight in bang yeah. and that's it 50 minutes yeah. and off so yeah. uh, give me some marks out of 10 then Jeff the Brotherhood uh, Rebecca out of 10 Seven. Uh, seven. Hugh. Seven. Ed. Five. Right, uh, one last piece of business. Those are the singles out of the way. Here's our album of the week. This is Civics Music. Regular listeners to this program will already know what I think of Bjork, so let's go straight to the panel Bjork and uh, Biophilia, uh, the album which was uh, obviously released on an iPad and iPhone, and it's very, uh, in a way, I guess, uh, not so much ahead of its time, but certainly right at the forefront of technology and where it's going. And I do know one man who's a big fan of this record and this person, Bjork, Hugh Stevens. Yeah, um, I think well, she's a one off, and she Bjork, and she can do very little wrong in my eyes. Um, in that totally different to everybody else always you can tell put so much thought and um, work into her albums each and every one you know and um, the films that she's made the collaborations the producers that she works with as well mm. and you know when I found out that Ed was on the panel as well it, like instantly I thought of the similarities between Radio Ed and Bjork and that they've both brought different producers to forefront, and your remix album does that, introducing new people to new music. And um, would, you, would you would would you say? I mean, there's there's very few boundaries with what she does. Is that one of the things that you like about her? In yeah, life? in that it's totally otherworldly, and in that there's sometimes very little structure to songs yeah. uh, of Bjork's and. Um, 
the albums over the years, you know, you've had novelty, you've had we weirdness and quirkiness, but you've had, it's kind of dark but uplifting at the same time as well. Mm. I think a voice uh, on it, on its own is just incredible. Um, and I think that everything she does, she she pushes things forward. She, she, even even as a, even as a fan, though, surely at points Bjork goes wrong. Does she? Oh, I mean, you've got to be in the right frame of mind with, like, a lot of p artists, even ones that you love, you know, sometimes you just can't handle it, right? And uh, sometimes <laughs> after a night out, uh, the last thing you want to hear is a Bjork album. Yeah, it's not whether it's good or bad, it's whether you can handle it at that time. Uh, Rebecca? Uh, yeah, um, I, like I was saying, I, I got obsessed with Medjula right. uh, when I was 17 for a while. That is the only album of Bjork's I've ever really got into and I'd, I'd bizarrely just loved it and I thought there was some hooks and stuff on that I, th I suppose but I'm not listening to this yet it sounds you know similar to the, what you would expect from Bjork and I respect her but she's not one of my big she's not one of my big uh, players but um yeah, it's very interesting and uh, you know I should probably listen to it that's <laughs> how I feel about it Ed? I think with Bjork, it's like context. It's like you have to enter her world. And I, I'm under no illusions that I don't think living in North London is the place where you're fully going to connect with this. I feel like you're gonna, you should be in Iceland. You should be in nature. It feels to me like there's a lot of the natural world in this. Mm. Um, uh, so I, I don't connect with it. Um, my thing would be, I just think vocally that... Uh, but I, I feel like she's always she's she's a pioneer in what she does. There's no doubt about it. She's a true artist, and the sounds that she does, and she, you know, she. We've always we as a band have always liked particularly stuff she's done with Mark Bell. You know, always always kind of really respected that. But vocally, I I think she's got a bit lazy. For me, it's like this. The music's very linear, which is fine. And we're, Radiohead, we're guilty of that as well. You know, get, getting rid of the standard verse, chorus, verse, chorus thing. But like, like, I, I just think something like it feels like she's just that vocal take is just a riff. It's kind of like a, I don't know. It just, it, 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 it maybe it's, it's, it's above my head. You know, it feels like you, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a stream. You're following a stream. There's, there's not much. Mm. You know, there, there's not something you can go back to. Oh, there's a riff that you can connect to. So, it feels. It, I, I find it. I, I mean, I have a problem connecting with it. I really admire it, but I don't feel it. Well, it's Fred O'Brien, who's been our guest, uh, alongside Rebecca Taylor. And thank you very much to Hugh Stevens for uh, dropping in. Uh, don't forget, by the way, Bjork, who we'll play out with uh, in a second, is also the guest of Chris Hawkins tomorrow, the Hawk on Early Breakfast. The Hawk and Bjork from 5 o'clock. Uh, we didn't even get around to talking about Soon Festival, so we're going to have to do that next week. Will you pop in and see us when we're down in Cardiff I'd Friday? to see you there. Fantastic. And uh, don't forget, uh, the Slow Club album, which is called Paradise, and also the Radiohead remix album, which came out on Monday. Thank you very much to everyone for coming. Thank you, Ed. Thanks for having me. Uh, thank you, Rebecca. Uh, Office of uh, Bit Parts in EastEnders will just forward on. I'm waiting. Or, or Coronation Street. Or Corrie. We well, don't mind. <laughs> uh, Hugh Stevens, thank you very much as well. And stay on for Mark Riley after this. More from Bjork. And this is finally happy. Take care, all. Mm -hmm.